Welcome back. Let's keep learning uh, about arrays with another two awesome examples. Uh, this is a second, third video, so if you haven't seen the other videos on just what arrays are, you may want to go watch those previous ones. All right, the two things I'm going to look at here is I'm going to look at hitting the W key and how it cycles my weapons using arrays. And then I'm going to look at this tower and how I click on it and how we can increase the fire rate and the radius and the damage of the balls. Basically, it's your standard tower upgrade using an array. So let's get to it. So let's look at the player first, what I've done here with their weapons. So in this global, which we've seen before, what I've done is I basically made an array called weapons, and the weapons are arrow, ball, and rock. All right, those are three objects that I have. I've also made a little array here, weapon name, one, two, three, arrow ball rock I have a variable that keeps track of which weapon the players currently selected so weapon is currently weapon one arrow arrow and I also keep track just to make things a little easier on how many weapons maximum right so the maximum slot is slot three in my array also notice for this array I don't have a slot zero just want to change it up I only use slot one two three for this one all right now, how do I use these two arrays? Basically, when the player hits W, I'm going to cycle the weapon. I'm going to make it go up to 2, to 3, back down to 1, to 2, to 3. And then when I fire, I'm basically going to access this array, and I'm going to fire the appropriate one, right? Number 1, number 2, or number 3. And when I draw, I'm going to draw the appropriate one, number 1, 2, or 3. So let's just peek at those codes there. So player hits W. Here's my weapon variable going up. I add one to it. If my global weapon has gone larger than global weapon max, which I had set at three, then back down to one I go. All right, so I'll be back on weapon one. So this is a forward cycle only. When I actually go to fire, that's a space bar. This is all it takes here. I'm sort of doing this the long way, but I make a variable called which weapon, which weapon is global weapons, and whatever the value of global weapon is. So if global weapon is 2, it's going to be global weapons 2, and that should be, I think, the ball, right? If it's 0, or sorry, if it's 1, you get the arrow. If it's 3, you get the rock. Once I have that object saved here, that's just the object I make, right? Instance create that object. Give it a speed, direction, image, angle. Now for those wondering, well, can I make the objects go fast or slower? That's going to be in another video or two where we talk about matrices. Okay, basically arrays that have more than one dimension, right? More like a grid. We're going to set things like that up. Okay, but we're just keeping it simple for this one. So that's the firing. When I actually go to do the drawing, I do all my drawing in here in the draw object. You'll see here what I do is basically weapon name. I'm drawing out global weapon name array slot and there it is again. Global weapon is which weapon I'm currently on. You could have an array also that keeps track of the sprites, right? So you could draw the sprites out that they're currently using. You know, it's just a nice simple example. Think about all the if statements this saves you, right? You don't have to go if weapon is one, if weapon is two, if weapon is three, if weapon is four. That could be endless, far more efficient when you see yourself using a lot of if statements, right? Consider the array. Okay, so that was the weapon cycle part of this video. The next part of the video was the tower, which I love because students are always asking me about how do I upgrade my tower without a million if statements? So here's the tower upgrade. I'll just show you it running. But what I have here is when I click the tower, this tower is basically at its own level one. So when I click it, the tower is now a level 2 tower. Radius got bigger. And uh, the speed rate got faster. And actually, the balls it's making do more damage. Okay, they have a damage variable. I click again. I go to level 3. Even faster rate. Right? Larger range. And that's it. I can't go past 3. So let's see how I did this one. So here's my tower object. Everything here is coded in the tower this time. So I'll go to create. And here are the variables I've set up. 
It's nice to see that last one there is just counter zero. That's for the firing. But here, level one, right? Just keeping track of what level the tower is. And then what I do is I make an array called range. And I'm just storing the values when my tower is at level one, range is 50, level two, 100, level three, 130. So you can see what's going to happen here. I'm going to be putting a variable in here, level. And so as level changes, and I can dump the level variable in there, it's automatically going to go to the right slot and pull out the right values. I did the same for damage, and I did the same for fire rate. You can see here that the delay time drops as the level of the tower goes up. Counters just for uh, counting how long I've waited between fires. So let's see how these three are used in the step event. So in the step event, actually let me show you one thing first. Every time I click the tower, if the level's under three, the level goes up. So it's a pretty cheap level system, right? No money needed. So here's my making the ball. If the counter, right, which is constantly counting up, right, this is in the step event. If it's gotten bigger than the rate array level of this tower. So remember, if the level of this tower is level one, rate one, and rate one, if we just pop it open, well, rate one is 30. If the level of the tower is level two tower, then rate two is going to be only 15. So it's not as high, right? So the rate of fire starts to go uh, up on this thing as that number goes down. So if I do decide to fire, I make a, and I'm always making a ball for this one. Speed is always eight, direction. But check this out. I've given the ball object a variable called damage. So that's already made inside of the ball object. And you can see what I've done here. I say, hey, the ball I just made, set your damage variable equal to my damage array, my level. So when you look at the damage here, you can see how this is going to work. If I'm at level 3, then the ball's damage variable is set equal to damage slot 3. And damage slot 3 is 6, right? If it's only a level 1 tower, the ball's damage is set to damage level one, and damage level one is only one. This is a pretty nice clean way for beginners, right? So just in the create method of that tower, you can put all its settings. Okay, one way to do it. And then I reset the counter to zero, right? And the counter counts up again. Eventually it's bigger than the rate. Now a lot of students always like that, uh, that circle radius. I'll just show you where that circle radius comes in. It's just in the draw event here. Remember that once you use the draw event, you have to start coding. You know, you actually draw the tower itself. So I draw the tower sprite out. I set the alpha down, turn to green color. And then here is I draw a circle. And I just, here's the size of the circle. It's the range array and the level of this tower. And so range 1 is only 50. If the level is 2, right? Two is going to be 100, 130. So you get the idea. The array, again, makes us very, very convenient. All these if statements or select case statements, okay, gone. Nice and efficient code, right? No matter how many levels you give this tower. So it's actually a nice little clean system. It's just another example of what you can do with arrays, right, that actually uh, make your code a lot easier. Hope that helps and gives you some ideas. Uh, there's some challenges that go along after this to get you to practice. And obviously, there's a lot more you can do with arrays, but uh, this is good to get you started. Thanks for watching. Have fun using it. Hey, guys, if you like this video, why not click the like button, or even better, subscribe to this channel, share it with a couple friends. That's what keeps us going. Thanks.